Once unprotected, rejected, not accepted, to marry, mix or work. Man in ships, restaurants, pubs and cricket clubs. Butown, Tiger Bay, down the bay. Diverse communities of African people, Caribbean people and like South Asian and East Asian people. They've been in Tiger Bay since about the 1840s or 1850s. It is triumphant that we are still here, you know, able to function, bring up children, keep families together, and be proud of who you are. The Marquess of Butte expanded the Cardiff Dock on three separate occasions. This necessitated people to work in the dock. At the time, the South Wales coal fields were the most productive coal fields in the world. You needed people to mine the coal, and then you also needed people to work on the boat to take the coal out. The people who worked there, they came from all over the world. To quote an author, Sophie Gilliatt Ray, Tiger Bay was a microcosm of the British Empire. Soldiers have come back from World War I. They've come back and they've seen Black men from all across the world, Somalis, West Indians, Caribbean men, Indian men, Arab men, they've seen them mixing with their old community members now. So they didn't like that. There was a couple of Australian and New Zealand soldiers. And obviously, you know what the Australians in New Zealand be living like in Australia. They got some serious colonial rule. They didn't like the fact that blacks was mixing with, with whites. When black and Arab men are being attacked by razors and mobs of men, Somehow they had to protect themselves. Shots were being fired to scare off the, the rioters. They were seen as provocative shots and that just led on to a number of events. White people predominantly tried to break into Butte Town to wreck the houses and beat up the white women who were married with, to black men and to hurt the mixed heritage children. The men and defended Butte Town by taking it turns to act as sentries on the bridge. All the women uh, at home barricaded themselves in the houses and prepared to defend themselves and their children. From a local point of view, I was always told about the riots, being interested in filmmaking and things like that. The older people was always telling me something I should look into, but it was never any sort of literature I can find. And I was lucky enough to then work uh, with National Theatre Wales and Mike Pearson and Mike Brooks, where they'd sort of researched all the information from the newspapers of the day. And that was the first sort of facts that I've actually heard as the accounts work out from the newspapers. It kicked off, it was the hottest day of the year. A group of men were returning from a day out who were dating white women. They were going eastbound across Custom House Street when a group of people accosted them. People started to argue with each other and it escalated. A black man is supposed to have sliced someone's throat with a, a razor in Caroline Street. That was the main incident where someone actually got killed. And John Donovan said that he had his throat slit by what he called a coloured man. So they looked for a black man all around what is now John Lewis. But I think the people were really angry about John Donovan and this therefore led to a bloodlust because it wasn't as a riot. Like I think that a riot suggests it's 50-50. I think that Tiger Bay was attacked and Tiger Bay held their own. The police created a cordon on the corner of Custom House Street and Butte Street and they said to people, you don't want to go down there. They've got guns and we haven't. After this, there was a, a great storm broke out. Tiger Bay was an island and I think of a community on this island, surrounded by canals and waterways, and the sort of conversations that took place over those 12 hours. Pollute, salute, soldiers in khaki, police in blue. Boots, shoot, climb the roof. The women on doors, kids playing ball, oblivious to it all. The next day, it kicked off again. 
because there was a Frenchman, he racially and verbally abused someone who was Algerian. But given the events of the night before, I would feel that the Algerian person was significantly less likely to accept this aggression. A fight broke out and the Frenchman was arrested for breach of the peace, but the Welsh people thought it was the Algerian who was kicking off. On Thursday night, it kicked off again because information had disseminated throughout the city about the impact. 3,000 people was gathering so they, they stopped people coming from the valleys and like, there was people just coming down to actually um, get involved in the drama, if you like. And so there was a lot of sort of um, I don't know, troublemakers and there was a lot of people just there for the, for the crack or whatever and they was literally burning down boarding houses and um, ripping people out of the houses. It resulted in the death of a young man called Mohammed Abdullah, who was born in Aid in Yemen. However, the records do not tell us if he's 21 or 29. There was a, a guy called Mohammed who died of fracture wounds to his skull, which, but the doctor at the time, Dr. Dobois, said that his, his skull was, that of a, it was thinner than that of a normal man. So, and um, the po in the post-mortem, they couldn't identify whether he was killed with a wooden, a, wooden, a wooden table leg or a police truncheon. In the inquest, Mabel Ali, who was the wife of a Somali boarding house master, stood up in court and said that he wasn't killed during the riot. In fact, a police officer took a baton and hit him over the head with it. On Thursday night, people kept going through Custom House Street, sort of rushing it. They rushed Custom House Street and Butte Street repeatedly, and eventually they got through. And there was another house that was attacked. They was literally burning down boarding houses and um, ripping people out of the houses with, with white women. In one case, they, they ripped the man out, out of the house. They was beating him up with um, saucepans, they said, and um, the policeman shouted out, hold on, it's a white man. And the crowd said, it is a white man. And they let him go, and he got rushed off to Inferi. The Yemeni boarding house was attacked. The Somali boarding house was attacked. And on the last day, they came for the Malay boarding house. The Western Mail put out a title saying, a Malay stranded on the roof. They commented that their dark Sanui bodies were seen across the landscape. And I thought that was really dodgy and uncomfortable terminology to use towards Southeast Asian people. Um, these men went on the roof because their boarding house was attacked. Even then, by defending themselves, they were still attacked in the press. And I found that really, really upsetting. Because I found out that one of these men, he chose to leave Cardiff two days after his boarding house was attacked. But he was also given the Victoria Medal for his services to the Empire. And I couldn't imagine it if my country was colonised and I worked as a sailor that my house was attacked and I moved out two days afterwards. No excuse. We consumed the news and continued to hate, self-educate and perpetuate negativity. 27, 26, 25. Young men really died and we fight each other, not the systems or barriers. Wake up, arise, realize. We have the power, recognize. We have the power. Butown is alive. Awake the tiger. Now is the time. Not only did the riots happen in Cardiff, it happened in areas with other ports like South Shields, Newport, Barry, Liverpool. So them, in them four days from June the 12th, the riots happened in all them cities. But it was predominantly about race, racism, and it was predominantly about um, social unrest. It was a period of social unrest right across the world, um, particularly in Wales. Um, and it was a story about how the officialdom colluded to portray the black men as the perpetrators, you know, the troublemakers. In fact, that was not the case. Bhutan is just a small, a mile long. Um, so it's like an island, if you like. It's a, at the time, there was only two entrances in. So it was very isolated and, and people of Cardiff looked upon it as a threat. There was fear of like, um, black men because it was only black sailors that was coming over here. It wasn't like black women was here. It was uh, the threat of this black male. The newspapers them days used to come out once in the morning, once in the afternoon, once in the evening, and once in the night. So imagine if you never ever came to Buton. You've never stepped foot into Buton. And all you know about Buton is what the Western Mail told you. 
Well, the Western male are, t- are describing Butown as nigger town. They're saying it's, a, it's an area where prostitutes walk the streets freely. And it's these white prostitutes that are having children with black men that are creating this mixed culture. And that's that's what the, 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 the media that's getting broadcasted across the whole of Cardiff is freely saying four times a day. So if you're this person who never came to Butom, but you've seen all these reports about Butom, what are you gonna think? What are you gonna tell your children after that, after you know all that? But don't go to Niggaton. Don't go there. The reputation of Tiger Bay um, was always one of two halves. So the people who lived in Tiger Bay saw it as their home, their refuge. It was a place where they could live in harmony. The people who lived outside it saw it as a strange place, you know. Too many black faces, there were Chinese, there were all sorts, too many different languages being spoken. And I think that during the, the rioting, which went on over four days, the way in which the, per, the press portrayed Tiger Bay, you know, made it more sinister. They talked about these half-naked, feral children. They talked about the women as though they were all prostitutes. Um, they talked about the men with their strange tongues and stuff. So to the rest of the Cardiff, this was a, you know, it's such a hell, you know. And um, I think because it had always been sort of separate, as I said, it was a haven um, from the rest of, of, of Cardiff, from the racism and discrimination went on. We are the Butte Street lurkers. We are the one who get the stop and searches. We are the assumed to be drug dealers in the Nikes and feelers. We are the artists. We are the future scientists. We are the new climate. We were the firemen on the ships, shovelers of coal. We were the young men who didn't die old. We were the unprotected, neglected, rejected. We are the victors of the exact same rhetoric. I think that from 1919, there were stereotypes and tropes born that are still here to this day. So about... 70 years after the race riots, the Cardiff Three happened. Despite the fact that a white man was reported to be seen running from the scene, five black men were arrested, three of whom were later imprisoned. I believe that um, the race riots and how they reported in the press has a huge role to do with this. I wonder if the Cardiff Three would have happened in the same way if we hadn't have had the riots. I was a city councillor from 1980 to 88. That's perception of of the bay as somewhere you went to drink and whore went on when I was a councillor and I argued constantly about um, the way in which Cardiff City Council viewed the area and the people who lived in there and they had this mindset which is about this breed apart not just a breed apart but a breed beneath as well that you know, they didn't have to consider in the way they would consider other areas and other groups of people. Not a lot has changed from 1919 to 2019 because you've got the same rhetoric being repeated now. You got Nigel Farage blaming immigration. Then now you've got Boris Johnson you got Boris Johnson as a prime minister, basically. So, and he called Muslim women in the cabs letterboxes. Them same colonial soldiers who returned from war, if you armed the BMP, the EDL, there'd be the same thing happening. You see what's happening in America now? See what's happening here? It's the same rhetoric. Just different tools are being used. There's a riot online. Social media, people are using social media as bricks to windows. So that legacy, you know, going back to the 1919 race riots still exists. I find it quite strange because a lot of people didn't know anything about the 1919 
wrist riots, but somewhere in the psyche, you know, there is a memory of um, of of this place of difference. But I don't think the community are victims because the community is strong, and the community is resilient, and they have showed that because the community is self-sufficient. It is triumphant that we are still here, you know, able to function, bring up children, keep families together, and be proud of who you are, you know, whatever the mix is that you come from. And, and some of us, you know, our, our, our heritage covers a number of nationalities. And we can not only embrace that, but understand it, you know. So for me, um, resilience is that we have survived in the face of the sometimes outright indifference, sometimes hostility of the organisations and uh, the powers that be that, that have been around us and dictating our lives, that we have survived. And I just think, you know, when you look at some of the people from Butte Town, I say thank God for immigration and migration because I think we are fantastic specimens of people. We are the victory of the bravery of the Cardiff Free. We are the resilience on the bridge of Custom House Street. We woke up, arised, realised we are the power. We recognise that the time is now. We are the artists, we are the scientists, we are the new climate. We woke up, arised and realised that we are the power. We recognise that now is the time. Now is the time. <laughs>